Once a rebel, always a rebel. Hey, what's up, Screen Crush? I'm Ryan Airy, and this is all of the Easter eggs, references, and little things you might have missed in the second trailer for Ahsoka. I am so excited for this show. This trailer has so many reveals that we did not get in the teaser trailer. We got lots of tie-ins to Rebels, and we can see how all of this is going to be setting up that big Dave Filoni movie that's going to culminate all of the events of The Mandalorian and the Star Wars Disney Plus shows. And from what we can see in this trailer, they're also adding a lot of new lore, things we've never seen, into the Star Wars canon, so be very excited. Obviously, potential spoilers are ahead for Ahsoka. Now, when you think about this in, oh, whoa. Person, I have told you, don't eat loud snacky chips on the job. It's 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 unseemly. You, you gotta quit. I know, man. I know. I know. It's I'm not even hungry. It's just a compulsive thing because of like other bad habits that I have. Look, I'll find a way to quit. I promise. Now, back to what I was saying. So we start with an Imperial shuttle going toward a Republic medium transport. And we, of course, first saw the medium transports in The Empire Strikes Back when the Rebels evacuated Hoth. And we begin with the villain narrating. Now, this is Balin saying, Whoa is inevitable. Now, Balin is played by the late, great Ray Stevenson, who just very recently passed away. Now, we did see Balin and his apprentice, Shen Hati, in the last trailer. The weird thing is, though, they're not Sith. They don't have red lightsabers, and they're also not Jedi. Although, as we'll discuss later on, they do have connections to the Jedi. They're also not Grey Jedi, because that idea is stupid and totally not a thing. These characters are something new. They're Force users who serve evil. They serve the Empire, but they're not Sith. And I think this is a great thing to add into the canon that can really move Star Wars forward so we're not always reliant on Sith versus Jedi. When they get onto this Imperial ship, they're facing an Imperial commander. Now, from the back, this guy to me looks a lot like Crix Maydeen. Who's Crix Maydeen? Crix Maydeen is this guy from Return of the Jedi. Now, a very cool thing about this is that when you look- Hey, 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 don't vape on the job. Oh, no, it's not a vape. It's just an easy way for me to kick my stress eating, which is my oral fixation habit. And it gives my hands something to do when I'm anxious, which is always. Or well, what is that thing? Doug, this is a naturally diffusive device called Fume. They're the sponsor of this video. It uses plants and behavioral science to help you trade out your negative habit for a positive one. Is it fun? Yeah, man, it's really nice and totally harmless. Like I said, this is not a vape. It's not even electrical. Look, instead of pods full with potentially harmful chemicals like a vape, Fume uses cores infused with plants like orange vanilla and raspberry lemon for delicious natural flavors. So these cores create flavored air instead of vapor. Plus it has this adjustable airflow and it's designed with movable parts and magnets for fidgeting, giving your fingers a lot to do, which is helpful for calming your anxiety. Fume is helpful for helping me to turn my negative habits into positive habits and it makes switching easy and fun. They have thousands of five-star reviews from more than a hundred thousand customers who have used Fume to change their lives and they switched when other solutions just didn't work. So head to tryfume.com slash screen crush and use the code screen crush to save 10% off when you get your journey pack today. The journey pack comes with three unique flavors and everything you need to finally be free of your bad habit. That's tryfum.com and use the code screen crush to save an additional 10% off your order today. Now back to what I was saying. Balin has an apprentice like I mentioned named Shen Hati and we see her taking out this Mon Cala in a Republic security uniform. Now these security uniforms might look very familiar to you. We saw Matt Lanter who voices Anakin in the Clone Wars series playing a Republic security officer in an episode of The Mandalorian. So it could be that Balin and Shen Hati are breaking somebody out of a Republic jail. That person might just be Morgan Elsbeth, who we see later in the trailer. Now, if you remember in the Mandalorian episode, The Jedi, when we first saw this new live action Ahsoka, she has a duel with Morgan Elsbeth, where at the end of it, she says, Where is Grand Admiral Thrawn? Obviously, that whole episode was building up to this show, which we're going to talk about as we go along. I love this shot of these two guards in the hallway just getting blasted. Yeah, boy, who shot them? Nobody shot them. That's their own blaster bolts that probably Shen Hati reflected back at them with such force that it blasted them against the wall. Balin says, One must destroy in order to create. And this is such a cool detail because this is basically what the dark side of the forest represents. We see this in The Last Jedi when Rey is like feeling the earth and she feels the balance. Death and decay that feeds new life. The dark side of the force is not inherently evil. The dark side represents destruction and death, things that you need, you know, for rebuilding and life. The problem with the dark side is when people start to use it for their own advantage. It's when they harness the force to basically usurp the natural order. And this idea of destruction is also an interesting connection to the name of his apprentice. Skull and Hattie are the wolves from Norse mythology who chase the sun. A lot of prophecies depict them as the embodiment of destructive forces and their appearance signals the end of the world. And right here in the hangar, we can see an A-wing fighter in the background as we hear we are no jedi and then the lucasfilm logo with this really interesting music 
So this immediately tells the audience, like, this series is something different. This is tied to the old magic. These are things that, like, predate all the history we've seen before. As we'll see later on, there's all this, like, force magic and lore that's very ancient that we're going to talk about that this series is going to be drawing from. And then we finally see her Ahsoka Tano. Now, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Ahsoka, but I'm just going to give you, like, a really quick TLDR on who she is. We first met Ahsoka in the Clone Wars movie where she became Anakin Skywalker's apprentice. So she grew up during the Clone Wars, and eventually she started off as, like, like super annoying, but then she became like an incredibly kick-ass Jedi Padawan. But during the Clone Wars series, she left the Jedi Order after she was framed for murder and the Jedi didn't take her side in the conflict. Now, her name was eventually cleared, but still the damage was done. Following that, she was recruited by Mandalorians to help retake Mandalore from Darth Maul, where she whipped Darth Maul's ass in a straight-up duel. She survived Order 66 and then went off with Bail Organa to co-found the Rebellion. So for years, she organized different rebel cells that were scattered across the galaxy. That's when she appears in the show Star Wars Rebels, which we're going to talk about a lot later on. Now, there is like one really important thing about Ahsoka's history that's very weird, but I got to explain it because we see a callback to it in this trailer. There was a three-episode arc in the Clone Wars where Ahsoka Ahsoka, Obi-Wan, and Anakin went to a Force planet called Mortis where they met these three beings who were embodiments of different aspects of the Force. You had somebody who embodied the good side, the dark side, and the balance between the two. Long story short, Ahsoka was killed by the dark side on this planet, but then to save her life, the good side, represented by a sister, put her essence into Ahsoka. So after that, Ahsoka kind of represents the good side of the Force in a weird way. Like, she even has the spirit totem, who's an owl called Morai, who follows her around. So, in the years just before Star Wars and New Hope, she actually confronted Darth Vader when she learned that he was Anakin, and he defeated her in a duel which should have killed her, but another Jedi named Ezra Bridger, who we see later in this trailer, actually saved her life by pulling her, like, into a realm between time and space. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Basically, she helped organize a rebel cell called Phoenix Squadron, and this show is basically a reunion of the show Star Wars Rebels, but more on that in a bit. So then we see Ahsoka in a temple looking up, and she sees this figure that looks like the daughter figure from Mortis. There's actually a very important mural that we see in Star Wars Rebels holding their hand in very particular poses just like the one we see here. And then she says, Started hearing whispers of Thrawn's return as heir to the Empire. Now, this is where we get to one of the greatest Star Wars characters ever created. In fact, one of the few great Star Wars characters who wasn't made by George Lucas or Dave Filoni. Thrawn deserves his own video, but I'm going to give you like a very quick TLDR on him too. So Thrawn first debuted in this amazing trilogy of books called Heir to the Empire. They took place five years after Return of the Jedi. They're now considered non-canon, but they are fantastic and great reads. Basically, Thrawn just about came like this close to destroying the New Republic before it even really got started, but he was defeated by Luke, Han, and Leia. Now, they brought him back in the new Disney canon in the show Star Wars Rebels as one of the main antagonists. Thrawn is a brilliant, unbeatable tactician, but his main tool is he studies art. By studying a culture's art or a person's art, he's able to, like, get to the core of who they are, what makes them tick, and understand their weaknesses. By doing this, he can predict what people will do before they do it. This moron is giving me everything. So what happened to Grand Admiral Thrawn? Well, in the show Star Wars Rebels, there's this Jedi Padawan named Ezra Bridger. He's basically the main character of that show. The show ends, massive spoiler alert, with him using Purgil to teleport him and Thrawn off into the unknown regions of the galaxy. Now, Purgil are these space whales that can travel through hyperspace. We actually saw them in The Mandalorian. So the show Star Wars Rebels was about basically a family unit of different characters. You had Kanan, who was a former Jedi, their leader, Harrison Dula, who we see in this trailer, Sabine Wren, who was a Mandalorian, Zeb, who was a strongman who actually made a live-action cameo appearance in The Mandalorian, a droid named Chopper, and the aforementioned Ezra Bridger. So the show ends with Ezra sending himself and Thrawn, like, off into the unknown regions. That's the extremely dangerous, difficult-to-navigate part of the galaxy that we saw in Rise of Skywalker. So the show Star Wars Rebels ends just shortly after the events of Return of the Jedi, when the Rebels have won the war, and then Ahsoka and Sabine Wren go off on a quest to the unknown regions to find Ezra. We get the feeling from watching this trailer that Maybe that quest didn't go so well, but more on that in just a second. Now, like I said before, in The Mandalorian, we learned that Ahsoka was looking for Thrawn. So, right now, I'm reading these great Thrawn prequel novels, right, that talk about his life in the Unknown Regions. So, if he was teleported to the Unknown Regions, I think the first thing he would have done is go back to his homeworld, the homeworld of the Chiss. What's a Chiss? Okay, the Chiss are basically like a mini-empire in the Unknown Regions. They're extremely smart, they're extremely powerful, they don't like to interfere with other cultures, but Thrawn basically made contact with the Empire to see if they could be potential allies to help the Chiss defeat another group called the Grisk, and I'm not even going to get into all that in this video. The point is that if Thrawn went into the Unknown Regions, I think he would return home to his home planet. 
Now, on his home planet, which is covered in ice, people live in these massive underground caverns. In fact, his family is so wealthy, their underground cavern has like hills and mountains and its own artificial sky. I actually think that's where we might see him in this trailer, in this gold chamber overlooking a landscape. Now, Thrawn, who's a tactician, if he was sent back to the Unknown Regions, would probably return to his homeworld, rally the Chiss, keep Ezra as a hostage, and then I think he would return to the rest of the galaxy, to the Shattered Empire, and reform it. Because if he could reform the Empire as a force under his control, then the Empire could be used to beat back any threat to the Chiss Ascendancy. And he would essentially be making the Chiss the leaders of the entire galaxy. In The Mandalorian, the Shadow Council even talked about wanting Thrawn to take over and run the Empire for them. Grand Admiral Thrawn is missing from your delegation. Any word on when he will be able to participate? in the Shadow Council. So what we're going to be seeing, at least in the first few episodes of this series, is this kind of mad dash for these people to find Thrawn, both Ahsoka and the Empire. So then we see Balin and Shin going to a kind of temple that looks like Stonehenge. I think this could be like some kind of side of power like we saw at the end of Mandalorian Season 2. The ruins of a temple where Grogu was able to call out to Luke. Except they're going to use this ruined temple to find Thrawn. Or how they're going to do that? Maybe they're going to find him through Ezra. Like if Grogu could sit on that ruined temple to find Luke, maybe this circular chamber is kind of like a map, almost like a Cerebro for Force users. And then they can use this to find Ezra. And where Ezra is, Thrawn would be as well. And we see Morgan Elsbeth, who obviously survived her fight with Ahsoka, and like I said before, I think Balin sprung her from jail. What happens when we find Thrawn? Power. A few other cool shots here. We see Shin taking the deck of a Republic ship, probably the prison ship we saw earlier in the trailer. And then we see live action Harrison Dula played by Mary Elizabeth Winstead. So Hera, like I said before, was the leader of Phoenix Squadron and captain of this ship, the Ghost, which we see all through this trailer. Now, after the events of Star Wars Rebels, Hera continued to be a major leader in the rebellion. We hear her name, na we hear her name checked in Rogue One. And her ship, the Ghost, was at the Battle of Scarif. And also, in the Star Wars comics, we see that she's standing right alongside Leia, helping to conduct the Rebellion. Also, I didn't notice this in the last trailer, but that patch on her jacket looks a lot like a flower symbol. I don't know if that's a symbol of her home planet of Ryloth, or maybe some kind of tribute to Kanan. Why would she have a tribute to Kanan? Well, buddy, Kanan... Okay, so Kanan was a former Jedi Padawan who escaped the Jedi Purge at the end of the Clone Wars. Years later, right when the show Star Wars Rebels starts, he actually trains Ezra Bridger. And also, you don't really see this in the show, but it was a thing, he and Hera were in love. In fact, in the final montage at the end of that show, we see that she actually gave birth to Kanan's son, who is named Jason Syndulla. And then we see her droid Chopper, who also we saw appear in Rogue One. Now, Chopper has been her droid for decades. She originally saved this guy during the Clone Wars. And next to Ezra Bridger, he's the most annoying character on Star Wars Rebels. We see her trying to convince the leaders of the New Republic to fight. I've spent most of my life fighting a war. That's why I'm trying to convince you to help me prevent another one. So just to give you a little bit of history on what happened to the New Republic after they won the war. So the Rebellion won the war against the Empire. They established the New Republic, led by Mon Mothma. Mon Mothma, of course, was in Return of the Jedi, and we get to see a lot more of her backstory in the show Star Wars Rebels and, of course, in Cassian Andor. Is there a more important issue facing this body right now than Imperial overreach? But following the war, Mon Mothma had lost her taste for battle. She immediately, when the Empire surrendered, dismantled the Republic military. She got rid of 90% of their military forces. And as we saw in recent episodes of The Mandalorian, the Republic kind of ran on autopilot, entrusting droids to do a lot of the grunt work. So what we're seeing here is like, there's a real tangible threat. Grand Admiral Thrawn is going to come back, unite the remaining Imperials, but Mon Mothma and the other members of the Republic Council just aren't into fighting anymore. Also notice there's a Grand on the Council right here. So Hera basically tells Ahsoka that she can't help her out with her quest, but Sabine Wren can. And here's Sabine Wren. So Sabine is actually my favorite character on Star Wars Rebels. I think she should have been the main character on the show. Sabine is a Mandalorian. She's actually from a Mandalorian high house. And she was recruited into the Imperial military where she invented this machine that could like fry Mandalorian armor. She felt so bad, she left the Empire. She abandoned her family, became a bounty hunter, and eventually a rebel. Now in the trailer, we see live action Sabine Wren on Lothal. Now Lothal was the setting for the show Star Wars Rebels. Lothal also has these very long highways that connect these communication towers to the city. And we see her riding in arc bike on it. Now notice her helmet has a loath cat. We've seen loath cats appear in live action before in the first season of The Mandalorian, but basically the surface of Lothal is lousy with these guys. So like I said, Rebels ended with Ahsoka and Sabine Wren going off on a quest to try to rescue Ezra Bridger. And we get the feeling from this trailer that it didn't work out so well. Sabine and Ahsoka didn't work well together because Sabine, frankly, is very stubborn, very proud. After all, she is from a Mandalorian high house. As we can tell from these lines. Anakin never got to finish my training. 
training. I walked away from him, just like I walked away from Sabine. You never made things easy for me, Master. But it does seem like Ahsoka gets through to Sabine and re-recruits her to find Thrawn and rescue Ezra once again. So the two of them are looking at this hollow map, which frankly looks like the place with the map room that we saw earlier. And there's something really interesting in this scene. Sabine calls Ahsoka Master. Oh, so she's a Jedi? Well, okay, not quite. So in the show Rebels, there was a period where Sabine had the Darksaber and Kanan had to train her how to use it. You're not fighting me. You're fighting yourself and losing. Now, he didn't detect that she was force sensitive at the time, but she really did get the hang of using that thing. Maybe it turns out Sabine Wren is force sensitive and Ahsoka sensed that while they were on their journey and maybe Ahsoka even tried to train her. This would explain a lot of the tension between them because like I said Sabine's very independent, very stubborn, it would be very hard to train. And then we see live action or sort of live action Ezra Bridger played by Amon Fondi as Sabine is listening to his message. As a Jedi sometimes you have to make the decision no one else can. So it seems like this message motivates Sabine to go back out there and try to find her best friend again. Well, maybe best friend, or maybe they kind of had feelings for each other by the end of the series. It was a Disney show, so they didn't really ever like publicize that. Then we see her cutting her long hair back to her classic look that she wore in Rebels as she decides to join Ahsoka to go out to the Unknown Regions and find Ezra once again. Then we see her here in front of this mural that she painted at the end of the show. Now, Sabine was a very gifted artist. Actually, her art is part of the reason Thrawn was able to understand her and defeat her in the show Rebels. So then she and Ahsoka leave with this droid who Yang. Now, this is actually a kick-ass addition to the show. Hu Yang is voiced by David frickin' Tennant, Doctor Who himself. There's a great arc in the Clone Wars where he helped these younglings build their lightsabers. Basically, this droid is thousands or hundreds of years old, and for all that time, he has been helping younglings use kyber crystals con to construct their sabers. Call me what you want, but inside my memory banks, I contain a record of every lightsaber ever made. And then it's toward the end of the trailer, so we get a lot of cool action shots. We see Ahsoka fighting Shin and a red-painted droid with a staff. Now, of course, we saw droids with staffs in the Clone Wars, like Grievous' droids, who basically had these Electro staffs that were made to fight Jedi because the Electro staffs could repeal lightsabers. This droid's also wearing red armor like the Sith. So if they're in the Unknown Regions, and if Palpatine's in the Unknown Regions building up his Sith fleet, this droid could be part of that Sith force that Palpatine is building in secret. And we get to see live-action ghost combat very cool as the two of them fly straight up to a whale. Now, this could be some kind of monster on a planet, or it could be a Purgil. If they're trying to find Ezra, then a good place to start would be to ride with Purgil, just like we saw Grogu looking out the cockpit in The Mandalorian. It could be possible for them to trace a Purgil's hyperspace path in order to find some kind of hub where all the Purgil meet, and that would lead them to Thrawn and Ezra. Weird detail here, Ahsoka's in the cockpit, dressed in what looks like Republic military collars, but there's an old Republic patch on her arm which tells us that this uniform actually predates the Clone Wars. It, it predates the formation of the Empire because afterwards Palpatine removed two of these little spikes from the symbol. She says, If we don't stop Thrawn, everything will be in vain. And this is so cool because this is just like in the Heir to the Empire books where like the Republic had won, the Rebels had won, Darth Vader was defeated, but Thrawn, who is such a brilliant tactician, was able to bring them back from the brink. Like I cannot even describe how very close the New Republic came to losing right when it was first formed. Just awesome. I can't wait to see this all in live action. And then, to support the idea that maybe Sabine is Force-sensitive, we see her hold up her hand like she's trying to use the Force. As Shen Hati says, You have no power. Uh-huh, so this is teasing us, like, oh yeah, Sabine's not Force-sensitive, but then we see her use a frickin' green lightsaber. Now, this could be because, like I said, she learned to use the dark saber. she was a pretty good fighter with it, or it could be because Sabine Wren has actually been secretly Force-sensitive, kind of like Finn, this entire time. Balin says to Ahsoka, Anakin spoke highly of you. Yeah, how's he know Anakin? Well, uh, this information's just recently been released. This character, Balin, was once a Jedi who fought alongside Anakin in the Clone Wars. So it's interesting that what we're seeing here are Jedi who were basically disaffected by the Order. But instead of continuing on in the old Jedi way that failed, these people with orange sabers are basically starting a new kind of order. They're not Sith, they're not Jedi, they are something new. We saw Ahsoka enter a kind of temple at this site in the first trailer. Cool shot of Sabine using her Mandalorian grappling hook on an opponent, lots of cool action shots, and then we see Ahsoka facing off against a Sith Inquisitor saber. So the Sith Inquisitors, we've seen them in Star Wars Rebels and the comics, 
and in the show Obi-Wan Kenobi. Basically, Sith Inquisitors were not full-fledged Sith, but they were like the henchmen of Darth Vader and the Emperor. And several of them had these sabers that basically spun around and made it very hard to deflect. So we see Ahsoka here waiting, waiting, waiting for just the right moment as she strikes and lands her blade between the spinning blades. Very, very cool. Now, like I said before, the thing I'm most excited about for this show is Lars Mikkelsen live action playing Thrawn. He voiced him in the show Rebels, but now we get to see him in his full live action glory. Now, all of this is going to be setting up that Dave Filoni film, which is going to culminate all these Disney Plus shows. Mandalorian seasons one through three, Book of Boba Fett, and of course, Ahsoka. Guys, are you excited for this show? Let me know your thoughts in the trailer down in the comments below or at me on Twitter. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe, smash that bell for alerts. For Screen Crush, I'm Ryan Airy.